Welcome back to the channel and hi if you are new. Today we'll be looking at a set of IEMs. This is the Oravetti Lowmaster. It's the latest model in Oravetti's black lineup. It retails for 149 US dollars. So what does black stand for? According to Oravetti, it stands for basic line exquisite quality kept. I want to thank Oravetti for sending in the Lowmaster for review. The Lowmaster is an IEM that I really like for my tastes. I have been using it every day for the last two weeks for everything. Not just listening to music, but for movies and video editing too. So that says something about it. Let's check out the packaging and accessories the Lowmaster comes with. The packaging is really simple. The box is small. I like the black on black color style on it as it looks pretty sleek. And it also aligns with the color of the IEMs. Inside the box, you see a very nice zippered hard case. Inside, it's the Lowmaster and the cable. There are two set of tips inside this little box. One set of wide bore tips and one set of normal bullet style ear tips. The Lowmaster belongs to Oravetti's more budget line. It features one 10mm composite dynamic driver and two BA drivers. The shell is 3D printed with an optimized acoustic structure inside. The IEM has a semi-custom style shell with this wing here. It sits very well in my ears. There are two vents on each side, one on the bottom of the face plate and the other on the inside. The noise isolation is above average for vented IEMs, so you can use it to block out noise in trains or planes. And it has a super nice carbon fiber faceplate. I'm a racing fan, so everything with carbon fiber I will rate it very high. But seriously, this forged carbon faceplate does look really nice, especially on a more budget IEM. The Lowmaster has a flat 2 pin socket but it comes with a recessed 2-pin cable instead of a normal 2-pin cable, which is kind of strange. It works fine, but maybe it's just me being OCD. It's the same with all other Oravetti models. The cable feels pretty nice, but I'd really like to see a modular cable, as I want to use it with a balance jack. I actually swapped out the cable with the iBaso 3T154 when testing this IEM to use it balanced. It doesn't really need a balanced cable because it's a relatively efficient IEM, but I prefer the balanced port as most sources have better performance at the balanced port. Okay, so here's the frequency response of the Lowmaster. The blue and red lines are the left and right ear respectively, and the gray line is the Harman target. I measured the Lowmaster using my Clone 711 coupler. It's not the most accurate rig out there, but it's good enough to be used as a reference point. First of all, you can see that the channel balance is pretty good. I did not align the curves afterwards. The channel balance is mostly within 0.5 decibels throughout the frequency response. There's more imbalance at the treble end. It follows the Harman curve quite closely from the sub bass all the way up to the upper bass. At the upper bass region, it has a less of a scoop compared to Harman. This will give some note weight and body to the sound and also make the vocals sound more present. There's also an early rise in the upper mid region. This will give it a sense of clarity in vocals and instruments. In the low master, it may also help balance out the slight boost in the low mids. Lastly, the treble region seems pretty smooth, and it's more of a neutral tuning overall. Now onto my listening test. Usually I like to write down all my listening test findings first during the time I test the IEMs. I've been using the Lowmaster as daily drivers for around 2 weeks now. And I measure the IEMs after I write down all my findings to avoid measurements influencing my thoughts on the IEM. I would describe the tuning of the Lowmaster to be just right. In general, the Lowmaster is a well-balanced IEM with a pretty neutral sound. By well-balanced, I don't mean a flat frequency response. A flat frequency response is objective and measurable, but a well-balanced tuning is somewhat subjective. It refers to the overall harmony of the frequency range, where no frequency sound excessively boosted or cut. 
The low master is coherent and has a lot of clarity throughout the frequency range. There is a boost in the sub bass and a slight boost in mid bass. Just enough that you will tap your foot along the music without bleeding into the mid range. The bass in the low master has a fast paced attack and decay for a dynamic driver, allowing the lower mids to maintain its clarity even though the bass is elevated. Listening to some movie soundtracks, the low master will definitely rumble for tracks that call for it. The presentation of the mid range sounds neutral and transparent. The richness in male vocals are traded for better clarity. It isn't the kind of warm and lush vocals you'll find in warmer tunings, but you'll be able to hear a lot of micro details and airiness in the mid-range and vocals. I feel that the low master does especially well in female vocals. It's engaging and lively, just on the edge of sounding sharp or shouty sometimes, which I actually enjoy a lot. The treble of the low master is very technical. I find it really enjoyable especially when listening to brass instruments and string instruments, instruments that register along the upper mids and lower treble area. For example, electric guitar solos and acoustic covers sound lively and has a lot of texture in it, thanks to the dual BA drivers. But by no means that the treble is bright sounding, but I think it has a better treble extension than most IEMs around this price. The low master has a circular stage. It is very accurate and holographic, but it's not the type of IEM that sounds super wide. It has great layering and instrument separation. The imaging is really good and comparable to sets above its price range. I find it performing really good in live jazz recordings and classical music, especially in smaller recording environments. For pop and rock tracks, there's a good sense of space and airiness in the vocals on well-mastered tracks. This is often a good trait of well-tuned BA drivers. If you're interested in some of the tracks I test with, feel free to check out my Apple Music playlist I linked below. I find that the soundstage of the low master to change drastically using different tips. I think this is due to the fact that the lip of the nozzle being wider than usual at around 7mm. It will stretch the shape of most ear tip bores. When using wide bore tips, the soundstage becomes noticeably wider, which sounds pretty awesome with live recordings and instrumental music. Using more normal tips like the final E tips, the soundstage presentation sounded less wide, but vocals and the mids sound more focused. So be sure to play around with different ear tips and see what you like. In the end, I ended up with the Asla Setna ear fit tips. I like it best for isolation and sound quality. But the wide board tips that came with the low master worked well too. The low master is a relatively easy to drive IEM. Having an impedance of 16 ohms, it will pair pretty well with any budget dongle DAC. However, I find it to scale better with more powerful amps like the Atom 2 stack, especially in the bass frequencies that the dynamic driver is responsible for. The bass just hits slightly deeper and has more energy when paired with a powerful source. Being a revealing and relatively neutral set, I think the low master performs quite well and is a versatile set whatever you pair with it. Using different sources in my listening tests, the low master will reveal the minor differences in sound characteristics. Comparing the low master to the ER2XR that's available for less than the low master, I find that the low master to have a faster and more snappy bass. The bass note of the ER2XR sustains for longer, so it doesn't really sound like it has less bass than the low master. But there is a bit more clarity and texture in the bass of the low master. The mids of the ER2XR carries more note weight than the low master, and it sounds more forward. On the other hand, vocals of the low master sound a bit more edgy and sparkly. For the treble, the low master is much more airier than the ER2XR. It has a larger stage and feels wider. Detail wise, I feel that they are similar in the treble, but the low master just brings the detail out more and allows you to hear it more easily. But I feel that they both have a similar amount of detail in the upper region. During my two weeks with the Orevedi low master so far, I enjoyed it a lot. Most of the time, I didn't find anything lacking trying it with different genres, 
During my daily commute, I sometimes wish it just had slightly more bass, as bass frequencies are the first to be drowned out by environmental noises. But during critical listening, I'm very happy with the sound of the low master. The neutral and well-balanced tuning combined with good isolation, I think I will grab the low master a lot even after this review. So if you're interested in a neutral and versatile IEM in the sub $150 or $200 range, definitely consider the Orivetti Lowmaster. It's the type of IEM that doesn't specifically shine in any genre, but just sounds good and correct with everything I play on it. It's a very well-tuned set. If I could only choose one IEM to keep, this would be the sort of tuning I would lean into. Thank you very much for watching the review and subscribe to the channel and like the video if you find it useful.